I like to think that David the Gnome would forgive you. As I think that David the Gnome would forgive you if he was still here with. Let me try that one more time. <laughs> 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 Take, take I like ten. to think <laughs> take ten. <laughs> I like to think that David the Gnome would forgive you if he was still here with us. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, you, yes, not me. Yeah, I never, said, I never apologized. <laughs> you never did, but I did, and I want to say I think you're right. I think he'd, Tom, you know, Tom Bosley would be like, yeah, I do forgive you. Did you know that gnomes subsist on a diet of raw mushrooms and kale? And be like that. That's enough, David. Uh, but yes, uh, <laughs> I like to think so too. Thank you for that. I think my favorite fan theory regarding the Zelda timeline is that all Zelda games are just the same story retold by different cultures. This is a, I this is a popular theory. I like it too. I think most yeah. fans of Zelda games like it. It doesn't really hold up to scrutiny at all. Uh, with There's a, a few games a, that definitely they like, connect have very connected clearly. stories. But if you look at those as existing and, well, they told a lot of stories in this culture about these three are really focused on that, then then it kind of works. But, yeah, it's one of those things where my overall view is just play the games, have fun. If you find something that connects, great. If you don't, it doesn't matter. Uh, apparently, King Snugglemane doesn't care for Zelda. I don't know if that's true or not. Well, one, I don't know. I, I, well, you were just doing, you were doing like a... Yeah. Oh, uh, yes. The Legend of Zelda by Nintendo. What a title. Octoroks, Tech Tide to leave us too. How does that rap go? That 80s rap that they did about Zelda? Uh, yeah, Link. Go. Get some. Ah. Uh. Uh, I'm so <laughs> glad to hear that Griff... Look it up. Zelda rap. Look it up. I'm so glad to hear that Griff is Team Taylor Ham. Sincerely, a Bergen County kid. Whoa, whoa. If it reflects your soul, why would you like, why would Link be a bunny? So I, this is clear to me. And also, if you played a Link Between Worlds, that's why Ravio, being from Low Rule, uh, he's a bunny. That's the dark world. That was a little bit of a wink. Uh, why is Link a bunny? Because he's swift. He's courageous. He's pure of heart. He totally. tastes good. Ew. <laughs> What's going on there? This, this game, makes me want to eat marbles. This game Wait, is your turn? Eat, I don't know whose turn it was, but the game... <laughs> Are you eating marbles? Don't eat marbles, kids. Yeah, I'm going to do you like Arnold Schwarzenegger in Kindergarten Cup. You eating, you eating marbles? He nods. Stop it! I agree with Griff 100% on the chicken finger dilemma. Boom. Done. Settled. Wait, I thought we settled it last time. Are we resurrected? Well, I settled it again. Okay. Have you guys ever played Okami? And they put the, the nice little O in there. Um, I, I can only speak for myself. I have played Okami. You may not like this answer, but I, I thought it was super side quest heavy, not super story heavy. And uh, I, when I played it back in the day, it was like you know the end of my college days and i just uh i didn't really dig it all that much and i will say a lot of it has to do with people like to make a direct comparison between that and twilight princess and i'm like nah not even not even remotely close okami yeah uh, it's fine it doesn't i have not played twilight princess. i have not played okami uh, but I hear it's a lot like Twilight Princess, so there you I go. think it's probably pretty it, good. I will say for those curious, <laughs> it's not at all like Twilight Princess. It's a very fun and interesting game uh, with a, a weird art style and some nice music. And uh, it's just, it's kind of relaxing, but then also intensely stressful in a way that only Capcom can do. Only Capcom goes that route where they're like, ah, oh, real soothing. And then they stab you in the face with a serrated knife. And it's like, why? Ease me into the waters. Uh... Who is, uh, Who is your did, favorite Sanrio character? Mine is Retsuko because she stands out with her death metal moments. Uh, so I did Google what Sanrio means. It's like Hello oh, yeah. Kitty, right? Yeah, it's the Hello Kitty company. Uh, yeah. Hello Kitty is the only one that I know. Well, there's like Kiropi. There's this. Oh my. There's this um, uh, uh, Netflix docu series called uh, The Toys that made us and they have a hello kitty episode on that that is fascinating and in that there's this uh, b-roll footage of like a mall in the 90s where kids were going crazy for sanrio characters supposedly 
And this one little blonde kid with like a butt cut, you know what I mean, like the middle part, he's wearing like a little frog character and he goes, if you want to be cool, you got to wear Kuropi. And it's just the <laughs> sweetest. Oh, I remember Kuropi. <laughs> A little frog. Uh, so Kuropi is really cool. I think everybody loves him. But like Retsuko is the best, dude. That show, Retsuko is an amazing show. Uh, Re- either... uh, Kuropi is my favorite. There you go. Do either of you enjoy Tokusatsu shows or movies? I'm talking stuff like Kamen Rider, Ultraman, Super Sentai, Classic Godzilla. Uh, I can tell you right now that Griff loves the original Power Rangers. Uh, Zhu Ranger. Yeah. Like they well, were, they were called Jew Ranger in Japan, like Jurassic and Ranger, but it doesn't really work. I didn't English. know that. I thought it was just yeah. called like Dinos, Dinosaur Team or something. No, Jew Ranger, but it's spelled it's spelled Z Y U, but it's Jew as in Jurassic. J-U, so what? Ranger. So did they change the title when they got their second batch of swords? To like uh, ninja, ninja oh, Rangers? Oh, 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 Griff, oh Griff, those are completely different shows. Those are not oh, the really? same show. So uh, the Super Sentai series it started with like, well, correct me if I'm wrong, comments, but there was like Battle Fever J and some other wacky stuff. But it's been going since the 70s, and every season, well, there's multiple seasons sometimes, but every time there's new outfits and and Mecha, it's a completely different team and a completely different theme. Power Rangers was rebranded from Jew Ranger. They brought it over here. Um, you keep and, saying it, and every time you say it, it, it that's does, literally it what it's called. It's very uncomfortable. <laughs> that's what the series is called in Japan. Let, well, uh, but it's that specific season. Well, let me finish. What they did is they took all the action footage from that. They shot some wraparound stuff. And then when they wanted, when they ran out of that footage, they just went to the next series. But they kept the same actors in America. But now more, it's a little more. It's a little more one-to-one these days with less sort of overlap. But weirdly, even in the Japanese series, there are some times where like characters from past seasons will show up and do a cool cameo. But it's like the whole Power Rangers of it all in America, it, the original sort of run, very, very messy. Um, so yeah, you also, should check it I, out. I love classic Godzilla. I've seen like uh, almost all of the, or, or the original era where uh, I'm forgetting all the words and names for what all the eras are called. Uh, but I've seen all the original ones, even the ones that don't have Godzilla in it, like uh, like uh, Atragon and uh, Rodan. Uh, Rodan and Mothra. Mothra is so fun. Like, I'm just so hoping they actually do like a legit Mothra uh, reboot in America with like the the current like Godzilla thing that they're doing right now, the Godzilla universe. Oh man, well, who knows? Uh, I think the short answer to this question is, yeah, kinda. I wouldn't say that we're super uh, like fans, but we know a bit. Um, I'm a big, I'm a big Godzilla fan. I wasn't until recently. I just recently. I just meant about. I meant about the whole, uh, the whole genre. Like, I know some people who are super fans. We're not at that level. We're not there. We're casual fans. what are your thoughts on the Switch OLED model? It looks nice. If I didn't have a Switch, I would get it, but I do. I'm, I'm probably going to get it anyway. Uh, the the LAN port is going to be a really big deal for me. Yeah. Because we with all records, like if you guys have watched the Mario Golf episode, the first episode, you can tell that we'd already been trying to record for like 30 minutes. Uh, and, we, and I got a hole in one in one of those that we had to dump. And yeah, I'm real upset about that because it was. I didn't great. record it. Yeah, it that was, was from there was there was a mix of like me forgetting to hit the record button and also just us getting constantly kicked out of uh, our online session. So yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm definitely gonna get it just because of the land port, which is I like think not my, a super exciting thing. What's weird about that is I'm like, couldn't you just sell that dock separately? Because it seems like the hardware really isn't all that different. Like it's just the screen size. Yeah. So I'm like, well, I'm, can I, I buy guess the I, new dock care, with my old Switch? I care about the screen, too, because having the screen even just be like, uh, what, like a half an inch bigger is a, a big enough deal. Like, I play my Switch enough, like, like Port- in free portably. mode. Yeah. yeah. I play, I gotta say, I play docked a lot, so it's like, when, I, I like playing portably, too, but I really primarily play docked. Uh, but back in the DS days, I got the DS Lite, I got a DSi, like... So if this were a little bit more of a hardware change, then I would totally, totally go for it. But 
currently, like, I'm, I'm good. My Switch is in very nice condition, and I just am not super motivated to do it. And uh, there you, probably you're a on lot your of second people. Switch, right? Well, I had to. Here's what happened, right? So during the beginning of the pandemic, um, like around June of last year, my Switch's fans started burning out, and nobody was doing repairs, including Nintendo. And they're like, "We're not accepting repairs. We won't do it." And I'm like, "What am I gonna do? Because I can't. My Switch is gonna burn out." You can't I, live. I need to play Animal Crossing. And so, <laughs> here's what happened. Um, uh, and, and I got another sad story to go with this that'll be somewhat entertaining. But, like, uh, I just said to myself, wait, I make, I'm an adult who makes good money. I'll just buy another Switch. Little did I know that, no, you won't just buy another Switch in the middle of a pandemic. So, I had to wait until GameStop had a bundle. And it was a bundle with a pro controller, animal... Those those don't go with the scalp versus fast because they're a lot more expensive. But here's what I did. I took the... It came with a copy of Animal Crossing and a pro controller. I took the pro controller and I took Animal Crossing, gave it to my nephews as a gift because they wanted it. Boom! Uh, so I was like, cool. I needed that anyway. Great, it's a gift. I got my new Switch. I transferred everything over. Now here's the kicker. I did all this so I could keep playing Animal Crossing. When I transferred all my data over... Animal Crossing just deleted itself because for whatever reason the game before an update that happened maybe a couple months later at the time it you couldn't transfer your stuff I guess to stop people from cheating quote unquote in Animal Crossing I'm like guys this isn't some ranked online fighting game it's friggin Animal Crossing so here's what happened like I was like this has got to be backed up to the cloud it wasn't uh, and I remember calling support and I was like, is there anything I can do to try to find this? Surely the save data still exists somewhere. And the guy on the call was like, uh, he's like, oh, he's like, there's nothing I could do. I know it sucks. And I was just like, oh, okay. I wasn't even really pushy about it. I was just, I was like, yeah, I figured I just, this sucks. And he could, I, you know, he could tell that I was like bummed out and he goes, yeah. And he goes, please take this the right way, but. But my kids would be really upset if they lost their save data, too. And I'm just like, uh, have a good day, <laughs> sir. You know and what's I weird? Hung, I hung up the phone in deep, deep shame. And I'm like, why did you feel the need to say... I'm like, I, that put it all in perspective. It's like, yeah, my kids would be really sad, too. Adult man upset <laughs> about losing his Animal Crossing data. And I'm like, cool. And you know what? I literally never turned the game back on or tried again. That was it. I was done with Animal Crossing after But that. you know what... Do you know what's weird about Animal Crossing is that they cared so much about people cheating when literally it's the easiest game in the world to cheat to in. To cheat at. I did that's nothing but cheat. <laughs> that's why I don't understand why they did this other than to punish. Do you remember, do you, remember you came to my island after I, the game had only been out for a week and my Your, island was already, dude, like I had a Godzilla statue right at the entrance. Like I had... Um, my you, switch thought it was the year 2060. <laughs> we need to do we need to do an episode that is a tour of your island if it's still up and running because I trust yeah, me I when I say it. Griff's Island looks like a like an idyllic Miyazaki hillside city in a Studio Ghibli film. It blew my mind, and I gotta say, you're you're actually being weirdly humble about it. Like I haven't seen an island that looked as good as yours since. Most of them were just kind of like cottage core stuff and i'm like yeah yeah it's everything's very close together and cozy but yours had a beautiful layout and you had these these thank you didn't you have the mcdonald's logo or something made out of flowers yeah yeah right at the entrance and then my flag was diet was the diet coke logo and yeah. uh it's like it might to put it into perspective though just because people are now going to be like we'll do an episode on it next week or something but for sure uh but just just to temper expectations, it's nowhere near as good as the stuff you see people post online. Like I've seen people post yeah, the most yeah. insane stuff. I, I never. I'm, I'm talking subjectively. I like yeah, what Griff did. I never messed with like making your own prints for like the ground or for like surfaces or anything. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I didn't I didn't get anywhere near that. Like I pretty much it just was like what was available in the game during the first couple months that it was out. I don't think I even stuck around for the first update. Like I, I don't think I've touched the game since then. Yeah, you're like I'm done. Game. And I was like, dude, the idea is to chill out, do what you could do in a day, pick at it, play another game. I, and you're like, no, I just when I'm is, done, is, I change it forward and I do what else I want. Yeah, I would just I would I would like you know, I would I would hit all the rocks and get all of my ore and I would shake all the trees and get all my fruit. 
and then I'm just done. And it's like, oh, I have no reason to be alive anymore. I guess I got to switch it to the next day so I can do more. Here's what, like, I, I'll say this, and and then maybe we'll wrap it up because we're going a little long-winded this week. But, like, the original Animal Crossing, nothing has quite lived up to that experience for me. And it's largely because you could find NES games. And I know that sounds stupid, but it was so magical when you just rummage through the dump and it's like, you found Balloon Fight. And I'm like, what? And you could put the little oh. NES console in your basement and play No Fool and Balloon Fight or I Wario's Woods. I do remember that. And it was I played that game awesome. just for that. And here's what I would like them to do. And I feel like this is not a tall ask. I would like them to link up Animal Crossing with a Nintendo Switch online virtual console service so that you could play games together when people are on your Animal Crossing island and or, have the footage like come up on your TV or play it with a villager. Maybe I liked, every, your, maybe I liked your original idea of combining it with the Nintendo Game Gallery or wherever that was. You yeah. know, like, you can buy a checkerboard. You can buy... Uh, like a little, you can make a little mini golf. Course. Yeah, I wanted like, them to put. I, to yeah, I wanted them to put the the clubhouse games in Animal Crossing because I'm like, so much of Animal Crossing is them going, let's go play checkers, and then you can't. Yeah. Or like, hey, here's a chess set, and you put it down, and it does nothing. And I'm like, add some functionality to yeah. this stuff, just the tiniest bit, or at least back, that was that was at least really back weird. in the day. You could kick a ball to Bob's house or something, and that would. That be was fun. literally why I stopped see. playing it, was because you said that. I was like, I was like, kind of into the game, like, oh, it's like kind of, it's a little shallow, but it's fun. It's like, it's, it's like casual, and the music is really nice and it's really cute. But then you said that thing about like, how come you can't actually play your chessboard? And I'm like, ah oh, man, and like that was all I could think about every time I boot up the game. I'm like, I have like every kind of game board you can buy. And you can't do anything with it. You just it just sits there. Yeah, I even I if have you can't so play many... it, at least the characters you should be able to walk up on them and see them playing it. And I don't I don't think this is like a unique idea, certainly. I think most Animal Crossing fans would agree that like, hey, it's time. It's time to add way more gameplay and just the fun day-to-day -day nothingness of it all. The idea has always been that it's a communication game, and I feel like they've gotten I feel like the villagers are constantly saying the same five things. They're all sort of flat, and uh, they used to be sassy and strange, sometimes creepy, sometimes cute, annoying, angry, Like, but now they're all just kind of like, great day, isn't it? And they're yeah. like lobotomized, and they don't want to do anything with you, and I'm like, so, I, I'm not sure what happened here, but something's got to give. And now Mr. Rossetti's gone too, and I really feel my conspiracy theory is that they got letters from like scared kids and they have tamed everything down because somebody once got upset at a game of Animal Crossing and they were like, well, that's wrong. That's not what this game is for. So we're going to change the experience for everyone instead of giving you an option. Do you know and what I gotta say, it's just kind of, it's been, for me, it's been like more and more and more and more disappointing ever since. Yeah, I, I mean, like, that was the, kind of the first Animal Crossing game that I ever really got into. Like, I played the GameCube one a little bit just because of that, like, virtual console aspect of it. But, uh, that, it, it was a really good game. It was really fun. It just needed a little bit more. And, uh, I, I think, I think that, like, Donkey nailed it in his video where he's like, I've played this game for 50 hours, and I think it's great. Leia's played this game for 500 hours, and she says it's not that good. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, yeah, you gotta take it all with a grain of salt. It's obviously, like, yeah. an excellent, excellent game, but fans I can't complain. Want, I put, like, it's a never enough. You want, it. it's a game that drives your imagination so much that you can't help but want more. And you know yeah. what else I want more of? Time with you, my best friend. And I'm glad that I got some here this week at Happy week. the bar. Everything's going to be okay. <laughs>